Hello everyone, it's Sandra, and um, I've been missing in action the last couple weeks. To be honest, um, I've just I just haven't been in the mood to film videos. I've kind of been a little bit turned off of the whole YouTube beauty, um, not the beauty community, but just I'm just not you know I haven't been watching beauty videos, so I, I thus haven't felt the desire to film. So I thought that I would just sit back and relax and do my makeup and show you some of the products that I've been using every single day and that I've been really enjoying. My skin has been really miserable, as have I, because it's uh, almost the end of April and it's still cold and snowy. It's been absolutely miserable here. I, I feel like I see the sun maybe once every 10 days or so, and I'm the type of person that's hyper sensitive to stuff like that. I'm really, really, really easily affected by by the weather. I've been using the Tom Ford Traceless Foundation Stick a lot. This is in the shade number six, Natural. Now in the Tom Ford Foundation world, the shade Natural is usually quite dark, but for some reason in this foundation stick, it ends up being like a medium light shade with neutral to slightly golden undertones. I always wondered why brands don't focus on having a more cohesive color range. I don't like to use this foundation stick straight from stick to skin. I feel like the coverage is too heavy when I do that. So I like to take a little brush first and then start dispersing the product. I'm not going to use any foundation on my nose. Even though I do have some redness there, I'm just gonna use concealer on there. But I'm just kind of going over the areas where I have some hyperpigmentation. And then I'm gonna go in with my beauty blender to make sure that the foundation is worked into the skin. Now my skin has been a lot drier than usual because of the weather, I'm assuming. I would not recommend this foundation stick to somebody that is more oily. For my under eye area, I've been really, really happy with uh, this combination of products. This is a very, very extra thing. Like you don't really need three types of under eye concealers. But for me, the combination of these three has been amazing. The first thing I do is I use the number two corrector from Sicily. This is like a peachy corrector. And I just apply this in the area where I have shadows. Then I take the Revlon Youth Effects Concealer in the shade Light, and I use this just in the center. And then I take my Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in the shade 20 on the rest of the under eye area, and then I blend it all together with my Beauty Blender. And for some reason, when I use this combination of these three products, my under eye area is perfect and it stays perfect all day long. If I just use any combination of just two products out of those, it's not as good. But when I use the three, it's like the magic combination. I don't know the science behind it. I don't know why, but they are just wonderful. And then whatever I have left over on my beauty blender, I will take on my nose to kind of get rid of some of that redness. So I'm just taking some of the NARS Complete Concealer cover up those areas. I feel like every month my it switches cheeks. <laughs> like two months ago I had a breakout here and then the following cycle I'll have a breakout on this cheek. I'm using this Becca powder with a small brush and I'm just gonna use this on my T-zone to take a little bit of the shine away. So this is the blush that I've been wearing consistently over the last month, month and a half, and this is the Lancome Cushion Blush in the shade Sorbet Grenadine. It is so beautiful, so easy to apply, and I normally don't love cream blushes because a lot of them are hard to blend, but this is not hard to blend at all, and it dries to a nice satin finish. It doesn't move, it stays put once it sets, and it never makes 
my cheeks look or feel extra greasy. It's just a really fresh glow. Then for highlighter, I'm using the Kerr-Weiss Radiance Highlighter. Just a tiny amount of it gives the most beautiful glow. Sometimes I do a little bit of contouring. I don't think I'm gonna do it this time, but this is the contour that I've been using when I do feel like contouring. This is the Burberry Earthy Blush. Works beautifully as a crease color as well if you want to just do your eyeshadow really, really quickly. But today I think I'm just gonna do bronzer, and this is the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Bronzer. Milk Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. Generously applying this with a Zoeva 101 brush. I am really determined to get through this MAC eyeshadow quad thing that I made. Um, I hit pan up on two of the four shades, which is great, but uh, now I'm gonna try to hit pan on soft brown. So I've been using this color a lot. This is a, um, it's a Zoeva 227 brush, very similar to a MAC 217 brush. And I'm just going to generously dip it in the shade soft brown, which is one of my favorite crease colors by MAC. And I'm just going to buff this kind of messily into my crease. I can't even remember the last time I bought a MAC product. Aside from brush cleaner, I feel like brush cleaner is the one thing I keep purchasing from MAC. But in terms of makeup, it's been a long, long, long time. Then for eyeshadow, if I want something more warm, I will go in with the Surratt Doré Rose Eyeshadow. This is such a beautiful, warm, champagne, rose gold type of color. Um, if I want to stick with the more neutral look, I've been using this other oldie but goodie. This is the Burberry Pale Barley Eyeshadow. Mine has been through a lot. I've been using this again and I absolutely love, love, love this eyeshadow. This is one of my favorite eyeshadows of all time. It's one of the high-end eyeshadows I recommend everybody get. So if you are looking for something fancy, a nice little treat to get yourself during the Sephora VAB sale season, this Burberry Pale Barley eyeshadow is definitely a recommendation from me. I'm just going to take, take it with a flat eyeshadow brush and work it all over my lid. It blends in like a dream and it's just such a nice chic everyday neutral color. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of this uh, taupe chubby stick. It's not a chubby stick, it's a, what is this called? A magnetic matte eye color from Nude Sticks. This is one of my favorite products to use on my lower lash line. It does not budge, but the formula is really soft. So it's easy to blend, it's easy to get a really nice smoky look, but once it sets, it stays all day, it doesn't crease or anything like that. It's really easy to work with, and I'm all about the easy, easy breezy makeup looks. You can use this all over the eyelid as well if you want a more smoky look, but I like to just use it as, like instead of an eyeliner, I like to just use it as a soft definer. I have not been wearing eyeliner on my top lashes in quite a while. I have been wearing a little bit of um, a light color in my waterline just to kind of keep me looking fresh and awake when I'm miserable and sad when I wake up every morning and it's raining or snowing or a mixture of the two and I've lost all will to keep going with my day. I will pop on a little bit of a Maybelline gel liner in the shade Nude and uh, it makes me feel a little bit less useless. And I've been using this little sample of uh, the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara, and I really, really like it. It gives such beautiful volume, and it just gives nice volume, nice length. It makes my eyelashes look really fluttery and beautiful, but I'm hesitating buying the full size because I feel like every single time I've tried a product with a really good sample and I go and buy the full size, 
I'm always disappointed in the full size. It happens to every single mascara that I try, every single mascara primer. I'm always disappointed. I always feel like they make the little sample sizes better than the full size. Am I alone? Has this happened to you? Do you think that there's some type of conspiracy? Let me know in the comment section. But really love the sample of it. I've been using the MAC Oak Lip Liner Pencil with the YSL Liquid Color Balm on top. Now, I either use the shade 8 or the shade 5 depending on where I want my look to go. If I want a more warm, orangey look, I will go in with shade number 5, which is more of a corally orange. But today, I am feeling a little bit more um, berry toned, so I'm going to go in with shade number 8. Oak is a really nice, slightly brown nude. It's more brown than my natural lip color, but I find the warmth of the brown kind of balances the berry tones of the color balm, and it just ends up looking really nice together. It kind of seems like an odd combination at first, but trust me, it will look really nice, and especially if you like overlining your lips, if you like the look, um, if you like to create the illusion that your lips are bigger than they are, then this is a really good combination. So if you are too chicken for lip injections like I am, you just wanna fake it, fake it till you make it, then this is for you, my friend. And I'm not overlining all the way around my mouth. I'm just overlining this, these parts, like right here and then right here. And that's the finished look. This is the look that I've been wearing on a almost everyday basis for the last three weeks. Definitely two weeks bordering on three weeks. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.